Hello everyone, my name is John Lloyd D. DeLarna, from BSN 22 Inches, and today I'll be discussing a topic for popular culture. Oral history of the Philippines pre-colonial period Introduction, include those covered by the prehistory and the early history, 900-1521, of the Philippine archipelago's inhabitants. The indigenous forebears of today's Filipino people, agriculture, societal and environmental concepts, spiritual beliefs, advances in technology, science, and the arts people of pre-colonial period. The Negritos were early settlers but their appearance in the Philippines has not been reliably dated. The Negritos were early settlers but their appearance in the Philippines has not been reliably dated. T by 1000 BC, the inhabitants of the Philippine archipelago had developed into four distinct kinds of peoples. Tribal groups Itis, Hanunu, Ilongots and the Mangayan who depended on hunter-gathering and were concentrated in forests, warrior societies, such as the Iceneg and Kalangas who practiced social ranking and ritualized warfare and roamed the plains, the petty plutocracy of the Ifugao Cordillera Highlanders, who occupied the Mo'an ranges of Luzon, and the harbor principalities of the Estuarine civilizations that grew along rivers and seashores while participating in trans-island maritime trade. Education and handwriting Pre-colonial education Pre-colonial writing systems During the early period almost everyone in the society male or female knows how to read and write. They have their own method of writing which they use sharp pointed tools, leaves, bamboo and trunks skin. They write from top to bottom and read it from left to right. Accordingly they have their libida which script is different from China, Japan and India. This account was told by one of the first Spanish missionaries who came in the Philippines, Fr. Pedro Chirino. Pre-colonial writing systems Another account proved after the discovery of Ajar and Kaladagan, Batangas. This system of writing came from the alphabet of Sumatra, the first Visayan. Tagalog, Ilocano and Semethic groups have their own dialect and form of writing too. And their alphabet, from Asakan, Indian, they have an alphabet composed of 17 letters, three of which are vowels and 14 are consonants. The Muslims have also their own system basing on their dialect. This is called Kirim of Miraneo and Jiwi of the Tosug, which they are still using until this day. Abugida pre-colonial method of handwriting, Bebeyan. Language, the eight major languages spoken by the ancient Filipinos were Tagalog, Ilocano, Pangasinense, Kapampanga, Sudbuhanan, Hiligaynon, Samarnan, Maguindana. Malayo-Polynesian language is the mother tongue of Malay and Pacific races, religion early Filipinos worshipped the supreme being they called Bathalang Makapal, minor deities they worshipped. Kama, Idinail god of agriculture, Sidapa god of death, Agni god of fire, Mandarangan god of war, Lalahan goddess of harvest, Sijinarugan god of hell. Religion the pre-Spanish Filipinos worshipped nature, the sun, the moon, the animals, the birds and even old trees. They believed in ancestral spirits called Anitas by the Tagalogs and Dewitas by the Visayans. The Babalan and Catalonian are priestesses who perform ritual offerings of sacrifice. Pre-colonial life of the Filipinos, housing and clothing. Bahay Kubo The Bahay Kubo, or Nipahut, is a type of stilt house indigenous to the cultures of the Philippines. It is also known as Payag or Camelag in other languages of the Philippines. It often serves as an icon of Philippine culture. Its architectural principles gave way to many of Filipino traditional houses and buildings that rose after the pre-colonial era. Bail The Ifugao houses called Bail were usually similar in architectural designs but they differ in decorative details depending on the tribes. Their houses were harmoniously located with the contour of the rice terrace. The one ring room house of the Ifugao is commonly known to them as Fail. The exterior of the house seems to be nothing but a pyramid resting on four posts. While the interior space is enclosed by slanting walls and ceiling that appears to be spherical that are formed by the loft. Torrigan The Torrigan is the ancestral houses of the upper class Miraneo in the Lanao region of Mindanao. It is the dwelling place of the Datu along with his wives and children. There could not be any house larger than Torrigan of the Datu within the Sultanate. For this signifies rank, prestige and wealth. Sulu Houses In the Sulu archipelago, native houses are diverse. The stilled houses of the Tosug people are adapted to a coastal lifestyle. Traditional Tosug stilled houses have recognizable horns on the roof, the only architectural style in the country to possess such a roof style. Inland Tosug architecture is similar, but have bases similar to the Bahay Kubo. 
treetop houses, they were designed to endure the climate and environment of the Philippines. These structures were temporary, made from plant materials like bamboo. Pre-colonial clothing, the Filipino style of clothing had been dictated by the tropical climate in the Philippines, with a dry and rainy season. Early Filipinos as well as the still extant tribal groups in the Philippines wore colorful woven clothes, often with intricate beadwork and other ornaments. Comma, the men wore pants or a loincloth and usually, WNT topless, as well as having tattoos symbolizing power and strength as a warrior, while women went either topless or wore a robe-like dress. Comma, the Tagalogs of Luzon already wore a garment that was a forerunner of the Barong Tagalog the Baro. Earliest reference to the Baro was in the historical account of Ma'ai, pre-colonial name for the Philippines, that the Filipinos wore a sleeve doublet of rough cotton cloth called Kanga. Reaching slightly below the waist, it was collarless and had an ring in front. The doublets indicated the social status and badge of courage of a man, red was for the chiefs and the bravest, while black and white were for the ordinary citizens. Their loins were covered with colored bahag between legs to mid-thigh. The Visayans wore clothes similar to that of Indonesians and Malaysians. They wore a robe called marlota or jacket called bakero without a collar that reached the feet. The robes or jackets were brightly colored. The Tagalogs and the Visayans bound their foreheads and temples with long, narrow strips of cloth called putong. Necks were covered with gold necklaces and wrists with golden armlets called kalambigas. These had intricate patterns. Others would wear precious stones. Pre-colonial clothing Luzon Visayas indigenous nomadic people and Alipan government and judicial process government. Barangay earliest form of government. Comma, came from the word balangay or sailboat. Balangay used to transport Filipinos to various places in the Philippine. Brakipalago, Datu ruler of the barangay, also known as Raja. Comma, primary duty A, govern his subjects B, promote well-being serves as chief executive, legislator, and judge. Also supreme commander of the warriors in terms of war. Judicial process, all trials are public, sometimes datus hold trial by ordeal, people believe that gods will protect the innocent, murder, adultery, theft, and insulting women major offenses, punishment enslavement. Soci, classes during pre-Hispanic times, Tipinus can be divided according to th, a class is the noble class called the Maginu, the freeman class called the Timaya, the warrior class called the Maharlika, and the indentured class called the Alipin. Definition of concepts The Maginu were the ruling class, the educated class, the royal class, and the privileged class. It was from this class that the Datu would come from. The Datu is the leader of the community called a barangay. He is the chieftain somewhat synonymous to a monarch, raja, sultan, or king. Freeman class, Timaya, the Freeman class no known as the Timaya probably made up the bulk of the barangay community. They were free. They could acquire property, acquire any job they want, pick their own wives, and acquire an alipin. They were however expected to pay taxes, and support the Maginu class. They are the only class to pay taxes, and hence their importance in the community. The Maharlika The Maharlika had all the rights of the Timaya, but they are specifically the warrior class. They were well respected if not revered by the barangay. Unlike the Timaya, they were not expected to pay taxes. They would provide protection to the barangay, and were responsible for providing and preparing the weapons at their own expense. A Maharlika could change their allegiance to another barangay by marrying into it or by simply moving to it. This however required paying a certain amount to his datu, a feast would be given in his honor when leaving the barangay. The Alipin The Alipin had the least rights. They are not exactly slaves in the traditional sense, but they were indentured servants. Basically they served their master who belonged to one of the classes above them. But it does not mean that they did all the work in the barangay. The Timaya were probably expected to do most of the work in the barangay and the Alipin was likely his or her servant at home such as doing house chores and cooking, or aided the Timaya with their duties at work. There are two type of Alipin. Semicolon, Aliping Namamahe, Aliping Sajagility. The Alipin the people who bore the greatest stigma in society were the Alipins who were indebted to other Alipins. A Gigilid of an Aliping Namamahe was called a Bulisic. The Alipin the only people lower than the Bulisilis were slaves who were brought from other communities or who were captured in war. They were considered non-persons until they were accepted into the community. Once accepted, they had the same rights as other Alipins. Pre-colonial life of the Filipinos, music and dances. Pre-colonial music. During the pre-colonial period, Filipinos already had rich musical traditions. In the southern Philippines, 
particularly among the Majindanayong Miranao and Tasug Samalyakan peoples, the Kulintang Ensemble is often considered as the most cultivated of the region's musical expressions, Hila 1989. Pre-colonial music, cubing made of bamboo the instrument is held horizontally with the bamboo tongue in front of the opened mouth. Kulintang a set of eight iron plates with boss on a wooden frame. The plates are tuned and played as a kulintang. The set is considered to be a practice set for children. Although adults also play the instrument. Kudayapi two-stringed lute made of wood, one string for the melody, one for the drone. Eight frets originally held in place on the neck of the lute by a sticky R, terry substance, propolis, produced by honeybees to repair damages and openings in the hive. The lute is decorated with floral motives, the tail is carved to represent a stylized crocodile head. Tongalan long bamboo tubes. Closed at one end by the node in which the blowing hole is burnt. The flute has three finger holes. Gamble the drums were made with hollowed out tree trunks and deer skin for drum heads. Usually, drums are not played alone. They're accompanied by other instruments. Especially gongs. Drums are played by hand or by striking a wooden stick on the drum head. Pre-colonial dances before the recorded history of the Philippines. Before the Spanish conquistadors conquered and Christianized the populace, from the earliest occupation, the people danced. They danced to appease the gods, to curry favor from powerful spirits. To celebrate a hunt or harvest, to mimic the exotic life forms around them. They danced their stories and their shamanic rituals, their rites of passage and their remembered legends and history. Pre-colonial dances, Gawe Gawe features the movements of children pulling the stalks of the Gawe roots during a bountiful harvest. Dugso the Dugso, of the Manibus and Bukidnon, is danced during harvest time and upon the birth of a male heir. Colorful costumes and ornaments enhance the appearance of the participants. Sahat may dance of male strength and stoicism. Calling the deities with the sounds from glasug, shields, adorned with balasi, small shells, and saliringan leaves, gongs and drums sound. Lawin Lawin a rite of passage dance performed by sons of the Datu, or chieftain. The dance shows the maturation of an eagle, Lawin, from egg to adulthood. As the eagle battles with strong mountain winds, he eventually finds his strength. Economy and agriculture Economy, oversaw a large number of merchants, Arabs, Indians, Chinese and Japanese, for trade. Comma, most trades were conducted on riverbanks, coastal ports, and central plains. 12th century manufactured burnouts, storage for teas and other perishables. Agriculture, relied more on the Sweden agriculture, viseous rice, millet, bananas and root crops, taro and yam, carabaos are not yet used for farming. Maritime Maritime history is the study of human interaction with and activity at sea. It covers a broad thematic element of history that often uses a global approach, although national and regional histories remain predominant as an academic subject. It often crosses the boundaries of standard disciplines, focusing on understanding humankind's various relationships to the oceans, seas, and major waterways of the globe. Nautical history records and interprets past events involving ships, shipping, navigation, and seafarers. Types of watercraft in the Philippines, types of boats, Balangay Butuan boat The Balangay was the first wooden boat that was excavated in Southeast Asia. These boats were instrumental in the settlement of Austronesian peoples in the Philippines and the Malay Archipelago. Balangay Butuan boat The Kirakoa is a traditional Visayan warship, made without nails. It is known to be about three times as fast as a Spanish galleon. Kirakoa Para, the Para is a traditional Philippine outrigger canoe sailboat in the Visayas that transports cargo and passengers. Para sailing is a tourist attraction, especially in Boracay and Iloilo, where the Iloilo Para Regatta Festival is held annually since 1973. Comma, Para Vinta, the Vinta is a variant of the Visayan Para. The difference is the type of sail rather than the hull. These boats are used off the coasts of Zamboanga and throughout the Sulu Archipelago, Vinta Pre-colonial aquaculture, indigenous Filipinos were also involved in aquaculture and fishing. The natives made use of the salambeo, which is a type of raft that utilizes a large fishing net which is lowered into the water via a type of lever made of two criss-crossed poles. 
Night fishing was accomplished with the help of candles made from a particular type of resin similar to the copal of Mexico. Use of safe pens for incubation and protection of small fry from predators was also observed, a method that interested the Spaniards at that time. Other cultures and traditions, pre-Spanish Filipinos performed circumcision of their sons. A special rite done for their health and cleanliness, the Tagalogs had a different form of puberty rituals. Young girls who had their menstruations were blindfolded for four nights. Then a feast was given to friend, FND relatives. The cat, FNA bathed the young girl in the river and removed the blindfold. Burial and mourning practices, mourning for a dead chieftain was called Lara, for a dead man Maglay, for a dead woman Morotal. Comma, early Filipinos believed that the tattoo was a pasp. W to the, our world, sudden death of a man killed by sword, lightning or crocodile were considered ho, srabal and, and soul went straight to Kaluul Haitian by means of a rainbow. Thank you for watching. I hope you learn a lot. Bye.